All right, folks, uh, today we're gonna do a question answer video. And this is a question I get a lot actually, and to date, I guess maybe I haven't had a very uh, elegant or um, concise way of maybe describing why this happens or why I do this. And the question is basically, you know, someone will be following like probably usually a more strict keto diet or in, even sometimes a zero carb diet, quote unquote, and they'll want to know, like, Zach, why, if you're following a high-fat, low-carb diet, why, if you're fat-adapted, do you even bother taking in carbohydrate sources during, like, say, big training sessions and during races? And uh, yesterday on the podcast I co-host with Dr. Sean Baker, Human Performance Outliers, we had the privilege of interviewing uh, Dr. Daniel Plews. And Dr. Plews, if you're not familiar, is a researcher and PhD down in uh, Auckland, New Zealand, and he works with a lot of pro athletes and Olympic athletes, and he himself utilizes a high-fat, low-carb diet. And he talked about why he introduces carbohydrates strategically during his training and his racing. Now, Dan does a lot of Ironman and half Ironman type events, so they're very similar to mine in terms of like duration or time spent out there and certainly very similar in the intensities that we'd be utilizing on race day. And the way he said it sound, sounded like a great way to understand it. He said the number one goal when you're doing a long event, long endurance event, is essentially to preserve your liver and muscle glycogen stores for the end of the race. So if you can arrive in say like the last like small percentage of a long distance event with uh, liver and muscle glycogen intact, then you're gonna have a lot better chance of being able to ratchet down and kick, it hit, kick in at the end. So there are, uh, the way to understand how you would do that is kind of like what is your body using for fuel during the event itself. So no matter how fat adapted I get, like I could go zero gram of carbohydrate. And uh, if I enter a race, even a long race, there are going to be times uh, where I'm tapping into my liver and muscle glycogen. It's just not going to be a 100% fat metabolism, 0% liver muscle glycogen uh, metabolism. And, you know, maybe if I was walking, but if I'm going for a performance, peak performance, I'm going to be tapping into that liver and muscle glycogen. So throughout the course of that event, if I'm tapping into liver and muscle glycogen, I'm depleting that very finite storage. So my goal as an athlete from the fueling side of things is going to be to preserve that liver and muscle glycogen as best I can. And you can do that by burning fat, which is going to be a endogenous source in most cases. Not a lot of people are eating fat during a race since there's ample amounts of body fat, even on the leanest endurance athletes to get you through an event. So you can bypass digestion by tapping your body fat and burning that fuel source endogenously. So then you have endogenous carbohydrate, essentially, uh, which would just be tapping into your liver and muscle glycogen. And the third option is exogenous carbohydrate usage. So that would be taking in a carbohydrate source during the race. So one question I get related to this is, if I take in that carbohydrate source, though, don't I downregulate my fat metabolism? And you do to a degree, but you do so in the name of preserving muscle and liver glycogen. So if I take in, say, like an S Fuels Race Plus, which is their carbohydrate-based fuel source, what I do is I'll be burning that and preserving the muscle and liver glycogen from the carbohydrate side of things. I'll still be burning fat during that. It's not going to turn off my fat metabolism. But basically what I'm doing is I'm moving from a two-fuel substrate usage to a three type fuel substrate usage. So I'm kind of having two arms of the carbohydrate and one arm of the fat. Uh, and that's just gonna give me one more tool to defend that liver and muscle glycogen so that when I get to say mile 80 of a 100 miler, I can scale back on my fueling if my stomach is feeling a little tight or I have uh, the flexibility to kind of just tap into something that may not have been there in enough quantity to be impactful when I get to those later stages of the race. All right, folks, if you have any questions regarding this or any other things, please feel free to reach out to me on my website at zachbitter.com 
or you can head over to my social media channels and reach out to me there as well. The ones I'm most active on are Instagram and Twitter. Instagram is at Zach Bitter and Twitter is at Zbitter. 